بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد. Today I want to talk about the miracle of the immune system, and you know, like it's like the eye. There can be no eye better than the eye Allah gave us for us. Okay, everything Allah subhanahu wa taala gave any living thing, it is better for that particular living species. So you know, if you have a camera, it can focus far, but then. You miss out on the near. If you're focusing on the near, you can't see far. You even see this in the movies when it focuses on one person, the the other parts become blur. You see this in movies if you're ever conscious of it or aware of it. So, you know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala makes everything perfect. It's like if if somebody you know you you like uh, if you have a Mercedes car, you bought a Mercedes car, you expect that Mercedes car to have a certain standard. You can't just expect any Joe Schmo to come and start saying, "Oh, this is wrong with this car. This doesn't work in this car. This doesn't work in this car." You expect the standard of that car to be of a very phenomenal level. Well, then, what about the immune system given to us by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? And so, I'm going to share this documentary by Harun Yahya, and then after that, I'm going to have this doctor talk about the comparison between the system Allah gave us. And uh, what the killer cells do, and how they work differently from uh, from from antibodies. Okay, and uh, so you can have a comparison of how uh, these two systems work, and how what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has made is far more superior, and uh, and then also some other things related to that. So without any further ado, let's start this video. From the moment we are born, we are surrounded by a cunning and aggressive foe. These are germs, bacteria, fungi, and viruses. They eat, reproduce, hunt, and are hunted. However, an army which expertly protects against all forms of external threat is constantly on guard in our bodies. Our immune system. A regulated community with more than one trillion members, the largest, best ordered, and most disciplined army known in the universe. In this film, we shall get to know microorganisms and germs, and witness the way our bodies fight against them. You will watch in amazement the way that friendly and hostile forces behave in an intelligent manner. You will also realize that the intelligence which prevails in this war. And during each and every phase of it, belongs to God, their Creator, and you will also understand why it is that He creates disease. Our immune system. Get to know the mighty army within you. No matter how clean we imagine our surroundings to be, we actually share our environment with countless microorganisms. The largest of these are dust mites. These microscopic animals live around the hairs on skin. Smaller microorganisms are microscopic species which live in colonies containing millions of individuals. Human beings are surrounded by these invisible creatures. The enemy lies in wait at every moment to seize the opportunity to invade our bodies. Bacteria, single-celled organisms which multiply as soon as they find a suitable environment. Fungi, parasites which dominate humid environments. And viruses, the most dangerous invaders, of whose existence we only became aware through the invention of the electron microscope. <coughs> the most cunning and dangerous are the flu viruses, the smallpox virus, Ebola, polio, the AIDS virus, and others. A century ago, scientists were seeking the answer to a mystery under the primitive light microscope. Cells were destroyed at an astonishing speed by an invisible enemy. 
The reason for that mass death of cells was a secret to scientists at that time. Until that was, the invention of the electron microscope by German scientists in the 1930s. In this imaging technology, electron particles began to be used instead of the light beam used in ordinary microscopes. When objects were magnified 7,000 times, this extraordinary enemy could finally be seen. Viruses. Thus it was that a new dimension of life was discovered. A community formed of fascinating geometrical shapes, trillions of which live in this space the size of a full stop. For that reason, they are regarded as the smallest form of life on Earth, because they are as small as a thousandth of a millimeter. Viruses have been designed to survive even under the harshest conditions. They are able to wait in crystalline form until they encounter the cell that they will take over. They are patient. They can even wait for hundreds of years in frozen animation between life and death. They have been coded to multiply and, of course, to wreak harm as they do so. These are the detailed structures of viruses made more intelligible with the help of modern-day computers. And the AIDS virus, in the face of which man is so powerless. Inside it is a DNA chain, carefully protected in a protein covering. The information it contains describes how new AIDS viruses are to be created in the cells it invades. Viruses invade the cells of plants, animals and human beings, and are unable to live and multiply without using their nutrients, energy and organelles. That is because viruses lack the necessary systems to live and multiply on their own. For that reason, they invade a cell which is compatible with their needs and occupy it. That target cell then soon becomes a virus-producing factory. ...needs and occupy it. That target cell then soon becomes a virus-producing factory. So he said that a virus takes over a cell and then the cell becomes the reproducing machine of that virus. Okay. At the first stage, the virus very carefully identifies whether or not the cell is suitable for it. It checks the cell out thanks to special receptors. Later, it uses dissolving enzymes to open a hole in the cell membrane through which it deposits its genetic code inside the cell. You are now watching viruses as they move into cells. The cell, unaware that anything is wrong, continues with its normal activities. It begins to copy this new DNA, imagining that it is creating the proteins it needs. Because of this clever strategy, the cell soon becomes a factory creating its own enemy. Shortly afterwards, the cell becomes full of viruses and explodes. The new viruses that are given off will continue to implement this intelligent reproduction strategy in other cells. Viruses are rather selective. Different types of viruses attack different structures in our bodies. Rabies attacks the cells which constitute the tissue of the brain. Various cold viruses head for the cells covering the nose and the sinuses. The mumps virus only infects the saliva glands in our mouth. The hepatitis virus settles in the liver. The flu infection is the most difficult for our immune system to deal with, as every year a new flu virus causes the epidemic. And every winter we encounter that virus for the first time. It is evident that viruses behave within a most effective strategy and plan. To such an extent, in fact, that the properties possessed by a virus are totally designed in such a way as to make use of the system within the cell. It is obvious that the virus has a creator who is also perfectly aware of the very complex working principles that the cell possesses. There is no doubt that this creator is Almighty God, who creates both the virus and the cell in which it will settle from nothing. We did not create the heavens and earth and everything between them except with truth.
causing the human body, millions of times larger than themselves, to fall ill and even die. These minute viruses are specially created by God to remind people of their helplessness. It is God who creates sickness and who restores us to health. Viruses are created as the cause of sickness. The cure is hidden in our immune systems, another miracle of creation within our own bodies. So over here I want to mention that uh, like in the case of uh, this uh, cure that is being going to be propagated, uh, you know, they're doing this, they're using the same idea, the same synthetic idea. Like the virus goes into the cell, puts in it its genetic material. That genetic material then is reproduced in the cell till the cell bursts. Keep this in mind. And then it goes on to the next cell and the next cell and the next cell. Okay. So uh, the same thing will happen is that when it comes into your cell, it is going to use genetic material to reproduce and replicate the DNA that's uh, that's in the, the RNA. Okay, so keep that in mind. So now let's now he'll go over how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the immune system. So the virus is obviously very smart, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also made the immune system extremely, extremely smart. And so now, uh, the process that is being used currently is the process of the virus. But the immune system has been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to overcome the virus. Now, this will become very important as we move forward. There is always a germ somewhere in our surroundings. If it happens to be a virus, then that means the danger is a serious one. When the virus enters our bodies by the nose or mouth, it seeks out a suitable cell for itself. However, there is a defending army ready to receive it. The first units of that army to encounter the virus are the macrophages, which constantly stand guard in our bodies. In other words, the eradication units which patrol our bodies. Macrophages prevent an enemy from installing itself in our bodies by moving around between the cells. They have received special training to distinguish viruses from the cells of our bodies. Due to their structure, they can head for a number of targets and destroy several germs at the same time. They swallow and digest everything they perceive to be foreign and then continue on their way. If the enemy is in such numbers as to over... Now remember this point that, you know, there's this cleanup crews that go around picking up debris and junk and cleaning it and identifying, therefore, which cells are healthy and the cells that are not healthy that are replicating, for example, something from a virus or anything, maybe synthetic, for example. But they're replicating something, with, they're replicating and they're leaving out debris that they don't recognize, therefore, this so let's say if there's a cell, it's replicating something, but the debris outside is something that they don't recognize, okay? So they're going to then give it the kiss of death. They're going to kill that cell. So when something goes into the cell and it's replicating something, and even if that replication may be, somebody may call it a cure, it's going to give you a cure, but it's going to leave debris outside, that when these cells come by, they're going to be like, wait, we don't know about this debris. So there, there might be a possibility of an autoimmune uh, where it responds where the cells are killing its own good cells uh, because you're putting something into the cell that is now reproducing and leaving out debris that that the system doesn't recognize anyway this will become more clear as we move forward well the attacking macrophages then the macrophages secrete a substance known as pyrogen this substance calls the entire immune system to arms Pyrogen also stimulates the temperature rising center of the brain, causing a fever. A person who's so fever is caused why? Because when the body gets heated, it because organisms stay in our body because of because they like the temperature, and that's why they're able to stay. Okay, 
When the body becomes heated, more heated, more hot, it's one way of killing the germs off, to give them a temperature that they cannot uh, live in. Okay, so the body will get hotter and hotter in order to get rid of these things. The body is telling you to rest, right? It's not, and this is one of the problems with the modern medicine, is that you're taught, oh, just take Tylenol so the fever goes down. But the fever is there to protect you, to make you hot, so you actually get rid of the uh, germs. You kill off the germs. So instead of that, you're like, no, I have to go to work. I'm just going to take Tylenol instead of letting yourself become warm. First of all, your body is telling you to rest. Second of all, your body is getting hot so it can kill out the germs. But you don't want to do that. You want to use this medicine that you've been trained to take. So instead of using the natural way, which is to let it become hot, which is let yourself rest and let your body do its job. And, you know, in this capitalistic society where you're on the rat race, you're like, well, I'm not going to be able to pay my bills because I can't rest. And this is part of the bigger problem. Temperature is going up will naturally feel the need to rest. He is thus prevented from expending his energy in any other way. And all the body's energy is diverted to the war. Before the war begins, it is essential for the defense system to have knowledge of its enemy and to gather intelligence. Here an important task falls to the macrophages, since they are the units which engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the enemy and make the first contact with it. To that end, when the macrophages catches and swallows a virus, it carries a part unique to the virus as an information packet in such a way as to be recognizable from the outside. This is intelligence information prepared for the immune system's helper T-cells. These rather dynamic units decipher and disseminate the intelligence regarding the enemy to every unit in the army. As soon as they receive the intelligence, the helper T cells first warn the other cells about the enemy threat. They give off a molecule known as lymphokine to do this. The antibodies, produced by the analysis of the intelligence, resemble rockets specially targeted at the enemy. The B-cell's antibody production takes place at an astonishing speed. They produce thousands of antibodies a second. As we have seen, this communication between helper T-cells and B-cells is a very sensitive alarm code calling the whole army to produce weapons. Emergency mobilization has now been declared in the body, which is now engaged in total war. The defending army is mustered and soon made ready. With its three-dimensional protein structure, the antibody fits the enemy like a key in a lock. They will lock to a specific area of the virus or bacteria identified by intelligence and damage the enemy's biological structure. The invading germs will thus be neutralized. That is because the antibodies produced by the B cells are perfectly designed in the light of intelligence which reaches them. This resembles a tank being struck by a guided missile on the battlefield. In this way, an antibody weapon uniquely tailored to the enemy is produced. <coughs> to such an extent that an antibody produced for one virus is powerless against another. This sensitive antibody production resembles making keys to match millions of different locks. However, the B-cell, invisible to the naked eye, carries out that production with no mistakes. This is an achievement which goes beyond the bounds of human reason. The helper T-cell, which disseminate the intelligence about the enemy to all the cells, send another specialist unit into action. Killer T-cells. The viruses are neutralized by the antibodies produced. However, Invading viruses generally adopt very cunning strategies. Once a virus enters a cell, the antibodies are unable to reach it. 
Viruses sometimes hide so well inside the cell that neither antibodies nor killer T cells are even aware of their presence. This is because everything looks normal from the outside. Yet despite that, the immune system still senses the presence of something abnormal. In that event, the killer T cells destroy the sickly cell. I want you to uh, notice this point that he just made again. So when something's happening inside a cell, and they can recognize something's happening inside a cell that uh, that is abnormal, usually by the debris that's outside the cell. Okay, so now the body will sell special forces. The body will send special forces that will kill that cell. It senses the presence of something abnormal. In that event, the killer T cells destroy the sickly cell invaded by the virus. So now, over here, I'd like you to, uh, I'd like us to uh, listen to this uh, explanation here. than he does. So, first of all, look, I try to explain this in very easy words, if I have the time to. All right. Faust, this is the virus, all right? This is the antibody. You need your antibodies to catch the virus, so the virus can't enter your cell. My head is the cell, all right? So, if you don't have antibodies, the virus will enter your head, now, the point of this is to show you the difference between how a law system works versus what sometimes what we do. It'll be multiplied in your head, it will come out again, and then infect the next heads around us, okay? And that's it, then you're dead. And therefore, he wants herd immunity. He wants people vaccinated so people have, so that 75% of the people running around have antibodies will catch the virus in time and so the infection cannot go to your head. But this is extremely naive, you see, because what Fauci obviously does not know is that the interaction of the antibody and the virus is a one-to-one -one thing. It's like a football team, okay? You have one guy and he catches the others and but both are then caught. The antibody is caught. Now, what happens Dear Mr. Fauci, when a second virus comes by and the first antibody has been caught in combat because that antibody can't free itself, once it's bound, it's bound. The simple answer is the wall of antibodies is going to be overrun by the opponents. Do you understand? I haven't made myself clear. It's a matter yes. of dose. If the viral load is high, you can have these antibodies in your blood. They will not prevent the infection and that is why there is no real proof that any virus that enters the by the airway can be prevented from entering the cells that it wants to infect which are the air the cells lining the airway epithelium because there simply are not enough viruses and not enough antibodies to stop those viruses and therefore you are going to get that virus in your cell. Now, what people obviously do not know, including, is that once the virus has entered the cell and multiplied so that you get ill, now you get your cough, you get your fever, and if Dr. Selenko is not around to give you chloroquine, it'll get worse and worse and worse. True, but even people who did not get hydroxychloroquine did not get ivermectin, got well again. How did that happen? It happened because, you see, once a virus is being <coughs> produced in your cell, my head is the cell, while it's being produced, waste products are created. It's like a house. When you build a house, you have these waste products coming down that you throw away, okay? you garbage. So the cell puts these waste products in front of its door. Now my glasses are the waste products of the virus. So new viruses come out, but the waste products are presented in front of the door. Now, every one of you 
has lymphocytes. And among these lymphocytes, you have killer lymphocytes, killer lymphocytes. The, the killer uh, cells. White blood cells in your blood, in your spleen, in your, your lymph, that are able to recognize these waste products that are presented in front of the door. And when the, the pr patrol comes along and sees that there's a waste product in front of the door, the killer lymphocyte says, something wrong is going on, guys, let's go. And then they approach the cell, and then there's this kiss of death. The kiss of death kills the cell. And with that... So if your cell is producing something, that the, 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 the body is not aware of. What is this thing? Because the body is very aware of, there's a foreign element in my body, okay? The body is very intelligent. The immune system has a very strong surveillance system. And when something comes into the body that's not supposed to be there, then the body rea will react to it. That's, that's how the immune system works. It, there is a very strong... Uh, military system, but there's a very strong surveillance system. And so the killer cell, you know, so this cell is going to kill the, the cell that has this debris outside that shouldn't be there because it's recognizing something that shouldn't be there. This is how Allah made the body. That tree is destroyed, the fire is extinguished, the virus is no longer produced in your cell. And then something wonderful happens. You see, a killer lymphocyte then detaches from the head and goes to the next cell that's infected. So the killer lymphocyte is much more effective than an antibody. It kills many, many cells that are infected by the same virus. But it will always recognize only that virus for which it's trained. And so you have a whole army of killer lymphocytes that recognize garbage created by coronaviruses. Now, this COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 virus is labeled a new virus, but in fact it isn't. It isn't any newer than... Why is it not new? Because majority of the people that get it, especially the younger people, they fight it off. How are they able to fight it off? The body recognizes it. What's the proof it recognizes it? Is that fact that it does not it that it, it does not affect the person in in a very adverse way and they get over it so here and let's say you know if a child is born onto you uh, onto you it's a new human yes but it's still a human and so that human looks like you and me and you see the new SARS-CoV-2 the waste products of that SARS-CoV-2 look very similar to the waste products of the old virus. And all of you have been constantly been going into battle, into fights with all these coronaviruses that have been around all the time. And so you can bet your life that you have killer lymphocytes that recognize this waste of the new coronavirus. Now, we wrote this in our book. And we said, we believe that is why it is so damn difficult to die of this virus. All right. Am I being clear? Have I made myself completely right. clear? I, I can tell you right now, the audience is typing in and they're blown away because this was, I, I mean. So let's go back to Helper T-cells are not limited to warning killer T-cells. They also call in the macrophages to clean the scene up without delay. There is a great intelligence behind this behavior because the killer T-cells first have to distinguish between normal cells and those in which the enemy is concealed. When they find an occupied cell, they destroy it by injecting a chemical substance into it. Once victory over the germs has been achieved, suppressor T cells stop the war. The war may be over, but it will never be forgotten. 
Some B cells which served during the conflict are given long lives and keep the molecular records of the past invaders. The aim behind this is to accelerate any possible war which might break out in the future. When the same enemy is encountered again, the appropriate weapon to deal with it will be produced in a shorter space of time. Memory cells live longer than other cells. Furthermore, they divide at the end of their lives and the information about a past war is handed on to new memory cells. Thanks to these properties and the information in their memories, they protect the person against disease for years. Thus, a person who catches a disease as a child can never catch it again. The fact is, however, that it is impossible for a cell to set out a long-term strategy and then decide to store information. This is not an ability developed by the cell, of course, but a property given to it by Almighty God. Do not be grieved by what they say. All might belongs to God. He is the all-hearing, the all-knowing. A great war is waged against any germ entering our bodies. The heroes of that war have received no military training. Neither are they possessed of reason. The heroes of this war are minute cells, millions of which would fit into a single full stop. Moreover, this army does not just fight the war, it also determines its own military strategies and produces its own weapons. If all these processes were under our control rather than that of ourselves, we would never cope with the immense organization involved. For that reason, it is clear that one cannot expect cells or organs to possess such qualities as mutual communication, agreement, planning, and acting with a perfect organization in the light of those plans. Just think, what we are dealing with here is a few organs and a trillion or so cells. It is certain that a human community of a trillion individuals could never perform such a difficult task as mounting a defense without making any mistakes, forgetting anything, and causing chaos. There is one single truth here which must definitely be admitted, and that is that it is Almighty God, Lord of infinite might, knowledge, and reason, who creates cells, as He does everything else in nature, be it great or small. The fact that it is Almighty God who restores people to health is revealed in the Quran by citing the examples of the word of the Prophet Ibrahim. He who gives me food and gives me drink, and when I am ill, it is He who heals me. He who will cause my death, then give me life. He who I sincerely hope will forgive my mistakes on the day of reckoning. So there are two strategies. Number one is to clean the train, uh, the terrain, meaning make your immune system stronger. Make the person, his system that the person has, make that stronger. Will that be more effective? Or vaccinate the fish and then keep him away from everything and let the train be dirty, the train, the area be dirty. You see, another point about this is that uh, germs, like any living thing, like if I have a pile of dust, if I have a pile of garbage, what will happen? Bees will come, ants will come, spiders will come, where there is something bad, right? Where something is weak and is going to decay. Usually, if germs spread, that's actually usually, not always, like in the clean case of Black uh, Plague and others, uh, usually when germs spread, it means that it does not want to be in the host. It, want, it, it thinks there's a better risk being somewhere else. So it goes somewhere else. Here, if you clean yourself, 
right? Just like if you clean the garbage, the, the, the bees and the spiders and ants won't come. If you clean yourself, meaning if you make your immune system strong, if you work on that, that is more in accordance with how nature is. Vaccinate the fish, you know, so that, and then keep the fish in a bubble so that it doesn't get any germs. That's not the, the way of nature is that there's germs everywhere. And if, uh, you know, the, why is it that no 18 year old or less, basically almost none of them, uh, have died from, uh, this virus? Well, the reason is because number one, our body already recognizes them because there are coronaviruses types all over the place. Number two, uh, because our immune system is actually capable of fighting them. That's why uh, most people do not die from this. Now, people that have underlining problems, of course, they have underlining problems. You, instead of doing to them what has been done to the uh, left picture of the fish, what first needs to be looked at is how can we help them? Okay, and so like look at the studies regarding vitamin D, vitamin C, so on and so forth. How can you make the person stronger, right? We, we focus on symptoms rather than prevention. And so the body is more based upon, uh, is more based upon fix the terrain, okay? Fix the area. Take the purpose of medicine should not be uh, what is happening with the fish on the left picture, like vaccinate the fish. But the purpose of medicine should be uh, to clean things, to detox things, to uh, flush things out, uh, like in the case of fasting, like in the case of when you get a natural fever. So this is the problem with uh, being a reductionist in the sense that when you're thinking things in a very reduced way, you're only looking at the symptom and then you're like, oh, okay, well, let me help the fish by putting him in this bag. And you're not worried about anything other. You're not seeing the interconnectedness of things. So I'll end here. So this is the, Allah's miracle of the immune system is, is subhanAllah. And the fact that an 18 year old will not get sick means the human body has the capability to fight it. And that's the better option is to enhance that, to make that stronger.